I'll do the intro and then you can come in, I guess. Okay. I don't know. All right, everybody, welcome back to the shop. It's so great to have you here today. I'm so pumped today for a couple reasons. Number one, this is the first uh, series I'm starting on YouTube that's gonna be more than one episode. So that's really exciting. I'm really excited bringing you along. And also, I've got some help that's gonna be helping me out on this project. So, I would like to introduce you to Martin. This is your cue, Martin. This is Martin. He's awesome. He's a super aspiring blacksmith. Uh, one of the reasons that I'm really excited about having Martin come along on this project, I've worked with a lot of other people in the past and it's hard to find somebody who really has a desire to be a really good craftsman and be really excel at what they do and not to like be complacent on any details. And that's hard, hard to find and we're not suffering and we're not losing that. Martin's awesome at that. So I'm really looking forward to having him here. He's gonna be taking over this project. We're gonna show you that in a little bit, but uh, first I thought uh, maybe Martin, you could say, you know, like, hi, my name's Martin and... Uh, hi, my name is Martin. What do people need to know about you? Hmm. What's an interesting fact about yourself? I'm German. He's German. That's really cool. I don't actually have anything to, to, to ask you. I guess I should have thought of that. A little bit. I don't do interviews very often. I'm not very good at that. That's okay. I'm not very good at answering. Hey, you know what? Let's jump to the project here and get going. <laughs> Okay, so this is the full scale drawing of the fence right here. You can't really see it super good. This is only a short section of the fence. Back in 2016, I actually did this exact pattern and I did about 100 feet of it. So we're just adding one more 16 foot section onto it. The, the style of this is based off of um, horses. So we've got horseshoe nails, we've got horseshoes in it, we've got a couple other uh, horse related um, tools and stuff. So you'll see sort of when it's finally installed how that all plays out. But for right now, I'm gonna show you what we're gonna be forging first, or actually Martin's gonna be forging first. So Martin's gonna be taking the picket. This is the picket here. Hopefully you can see that. And it's a, a piece of material that just gets tapered to one inch here at the bottom. This starting material is two by half. And then we're gonna put a tendon joint on this end and then flare it up here. So we've gotta make about 30 of them. So we're gonna jump to Martin, starting that out on the forge. Here we go.
So I just tapered all of these uh, down because of forging I need to cold straighten and because of that they're a little bit not all the same length. So I just need to cut them off in the end so that they're the same and I can then continue to add the flare in the end. Okay, so Martin just finished forging all of these ends, the flare, which turned out great. So the picket is tapered, we've got the top end on it, the flare, and now he's just setting up to do the tendon joint on it. So that's what we're going to put on this end right here. If you're not familiar with what a tendon joint is, basically we create a shoulder here and then we have a pin that we forge on it, but it's essentially a half inch pin that comes out. You then um, have a bar that has a hole in it, you slip it on, sits, and then you heat it up and you rivet it back on and it creates a joint to hold this thing. So Martin's just uh, doing the marking on this. So we mark where the shoulder goes and then we mark how much material we need to forge it. We start on the fly press, knock it in the shoulder, then to the power hammer with some swages to draw it down to that half inch round pin, and then run quickly to the anvil and knock a clean shoulder in. If you've never made tendon joints before, the one thing you gotta be super careful about is not getting cold shuts in it. That typically, typically comes from your swages. Uh, you gotta really relieve them. I actually made a video specifically talking about that. I'll link it right up here if you wanna take a look at that. But uh, I'm gonna jump up over to the fly press to get that set up, and Martin's gonna continue marking out. We're gonna get these guys done. Here we go. So this is my fly press here, and we're gonna set it up for, for cutting these tendon joints with these cutters. I might have to clean them up a little bit, they're not looking super great. The fly press is such an underrated tool, you don't hear a lot of people talk about it because it's not like super exciting, but for this application it is like the best tool. I'd actually like to make a video soon in the future talking about sort of the fly press. I remember when I was trying to look at if I was gonna buy one or not. There's like so little information about what can you use a fly press for, how does, like we know how it works, but like how do you actually use it in a blacksmith shop? Is it worth having it or not? But anyways, we're just gonna set it up here. I'll show you that and we'll get going on these tenants.
just waiting for Martin to get his act together. He's coming in with the big hammer. Big hammer! Blacksmith loses his front teeth because he gets hit in the face. Okay, so there was this one time in my apprenticeship, I was uh, forging on the anvil and I was cold texturing this piece of steel. And the way it works is just the way the light was, you would kind of move your head a little bit to see to see your angle, right? So that the light wasn't shining on. So I, I was hammering away and I moved my head like this and I missed the piece of steel. And so, you know, when you miss all your force into the hammer, the hammer comes shooting back super fast, right? So I missed and it was a cross beam hammer like this and it goes boom and it hits me right there in the head. A three pound hammer it was so fast. Couldn't even see it happen. It was just like, oh, I actually like, like, you know, I don't know, I guess like a blackout, like you see like head hurt and it go to the mirror and there's this spot right here. It's, it's, a, it's an impact, but it's like a three star like shatter. It's almost like a glass shatter on oh, my head. I still have a scar if you look right there. That's the one time I, uh, I hit myself really bad with a hammer. I've also hit my hand, my thumb once, but that's a story for another day. Anyways, freebie for you. Okay, I guess we're gonna wrap it up there today. The pickets are pretty much done. We just have to drill a hole in them for the rivet, but we'll be doing that in a future video, probably in the assembly part of this uh, series. But really looking forward to uh, having you along. Hope you enjoyed this series. It's been awesome having uh, Martin help me out for this project. So uh, as always, if you like this video, please hit the like button. Wait, that's not how I say it. I say it, I say it like this. As always, grab your favorite hammer, hit that like button. Wait, that was your cue. You were supposed to like just jump in there. Or just jump like, in there. Like cut me off. Cut you off? Like pretty much grab it even bigger. How do we say that? I thought you let you finish and then go in and say, oh, you grabbed the even bigger okay, hammer. Okay, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll forget oh, it. Okay, okay yeah, yeah. Hammer. Okay, oh, so good. be like, grab your favorite hammer, hit that like button, and we will see you next time. Or you grab the even bigger hammer and hit the subscribe button. Oh, yeah, and say hi to Martin in the comments. We'll see you next time. Okay, that's perfect. Man, I'm taller than yeah, you. Yeah, you're taller this than me This is how now. you see the world? This is how I see the world. It's pretty crazy. It's amazing. Not too bad. Yeah, but nobody will believe that. No. They'll, they'll nobody will believe you? Yeah. Okay. That's too much. Too much? Yeah, I just... I just stand to the height I okay. have. <clears throat> what did you guys do for Mother's Day? My wife got breakfast yesterday. Of course. What'd you make her? I made her pancakes with a chocolate chip heart in the middle. Sweet. It was super hard to make. And then scrambled eggs and bacon. So if you could choose between a really big power hammer or a really big anvil, what would you choose? A really big anvil? Really big anvil? Yeah. You, like no brainer. If you could, if you could make only one thing, like forever in the blacksmith shop, what would you make? Axes? Swords? Axes? Oh. Axes. Axes? Yeah, they're a little bit cooler than swords. Uh, Are you actually filming right now? Yeah, I've been just doing an interview on you right now. Oh man. I know, you didn't even know you were on camera, did you? I didn't know, I was actually still thinking you're doing sound uh, Yeah, I still tested things. it, yeah. Sneaky, hey? Very sneaky. Are you are you pretty nervous about coming on YouTube? Man, I'm basically dying right now. You're dying right now? Yeah. You look really good for dying. <laughs> I love you. it.